Extreme Cloud Architecture continues to move at cloud speed. Committed to continuous deployment and innovation to provide an unprecedented feature velocity and improvements for our customers. Here are the enhancements in Extreme Cloud IQ June Edition. Enhancements for this month are in configuration capabilities for XOS and VOS switches, extended functionality in the AP150 wall plate access point, and wing controller configuration. Beginning with the XOS and VOS switch feature enhancements, Extreme Switching Portfolio has been in a phased approach for integration into Extreme Cloud IQ. Monitoring is already available with Switch 360 views. Now the XOS and VOS switches are configurable in the cloud via SSH proxy or supplemental CLI. Under Manage Devices, select the XOS or VOS switch. Click on Device Configuration, and you'll see the option now to add commands via supplemental CLI that will then be pushed to the switch. In the Extreme Cloud IQ journey, we will have full configuration, including switch templates, device configuration, and port configuration. Advanced configuration and monitoring of the extended switching portfolio, fabric integration, and switch 360 enhancements are also coming soon, so make sure to stay in tune with the upcoming cloud speed updates. Feature enhancement number two. Extended functionality in the wall plate 150 access point. The AP150 is a compact enterprise class wall plate access point that offers versatility for connecting a broad range of devices and embedded IoT technology. Extending the versatility of the AP150, it can now function in router mode, providing a simple plug and play solution for distributed connectivity. To set it up, simply select the device, click configure, and you'll see an option to change the device function to AP as a router. Going back to the Manage tab, note that the AP is now listed under Mode as a router. You can also apply router templates to the AP150 under Router Settings in the Network Policies tab. Network allocation parameters, including VLAN and associated subnets, are configurable as well. To confirm the device configuration and function, go to Manage Devices, Select the AP150, Actions, Advanced CLI Access, and here you can verify the associated subnets with the branch router with a simple command line. Layering in cloud configuration groups with the AP150, IT admins can easily manage large-scale enterprise networks via logical groupings of device by location, function, department, or based on what makes the most sense for administrators. Cloud configuration groups can be associated with IP objects, which apply various classification rules to the devices assigned to the CCG. Also note that these can also be applied to firewall rules. To create cloud configuration groups, navigate to Configure, Common Objects, and then you see the option to add a CCG. The naming convention is the first step in this workflow and it's recommended that it logically reflects the purpose or function of the grouping. Select devices you want in the group. In this case, I'll select the APs. While this effectively groups these devices together, we will want to take this a step further by applying IP objects. The classification rules are applied through the IP objects. As an example, I'll name this Health Clinics. We'll then add the associated subnets for the network that we want to classify. Right now you'll notice it says global, so this is the default subnet. So I'll click to add the input for the other network subnets that I want to apply the rules to. Now that the IP objects are associated to the network subnets we want, the next step in the workflow is to actually create the classification rules themselves. To start, you'll want to name it and add the cloud configuration group you want to apply this classification rule to. Now you can see we have the default subnet and the two classification rules and the two other subnets assigned to the respective cloud config groups, which consists of grouping of the APs we selected, simplifying the management of large-scale distributed deployments.
While we have accomplished logical grouping of devices and segmentation of multiple networks into a single IP object, the benefits are extended with the insertion of firewall rules. So let's walk through that workflow now. Under Configure, you'll select Network Policies, Wireless Networks, SSID, and then navigate to the User Profiles. Click Turn on Firewall Rules, and you'll see a list of services available to apply policy from Layer 2 to Layer 7. Once you choose the service, you can now select where you want it to be applied to. Notice in the drop-down menu, we now see the cloud configuration groups that were already created to enforce the firewall policy rules to the multiple subnets and devices assigned to the cloud configuration group. Feature enhancement number three, wing controller configuration via SSH in Extreme Cloud IQ. The wing controller is visible in Extreme Cloud IQ for monitoring, which was available earlier this year. And now you can connect via SSH proxy to the wing controller straight from the cloud for configuration. You can connect to the controller by selecting the device, and you'll see two options, SSH CLI or SSH Web Connectivity. If you select Web Connectivity, you'll select a runtime first, and then you'll be provided with a web URL. Simply click on the link and log in for full access into the Wing Controller for full configuration. Alternatively, clicking SSH Command Line will allow CLI access to configure the Wing Controller in the local terminal of your choice. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for exciting new enhancements on the horizon like Unlimited Data Horizon providing rich historical reference of data for informed business decisions, branch routing enhancements, additional VPN management capabilities, and so much more.